Okay, so there are, you all know that when you schedule an appointment to get agency, right, for uh, you can actually, um, the co templates will be created for you, right? Mm -hmm. So you're in Infusionsoft and um, you pull down to a consultation form and fill out all the data that you need to and that will go to Chris and to Bree who will then create contracts for you and, and pull all the data you need to go out and do your buyer appointment or your, or your listing appointment, right? But there are going to be times where this happens after hours, there's nobody to help you, right? So this is one of the reasons that we need to know how to start from scratch. But I just don't want you to forget that we've got the leverage here and this is the preferred method. And even if you're doing it yourself, I want you to fill out a consultation form because that helps us track it. That puts some automation for follow-up. Right. So always fill out the consultation form and then if you're having to do it in yourself, where we start is with the client database. And the client database will be found over to the right over here. Right. And the reason I say anytime you do anything in here, if you're starting from scratch, brand new client, always enter their name in here into the client database first. Always. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that. I never told you that. Now I'm telling you. Woohoo. But even in the first class they didn't right. mention that. This is the reason, right? And this is uh, some of what I'm giving you is hacks, right? Pro hacks. The reason I say this is because the class assumes that we're all highly detail oriented and that every time we enter in a person's name, we're going to enter it in exactly the same if we write a contract. But if I write a, a buyer agency with Ryan, what's your middle name? Christopher. Christopher. If I wrote a contract with Ryan Christopher Willingham, right? And then the next contract that I did, the contract to buy and sell, I, I buy and sell, you decided you only wanted your middle initial. And so I wrote it as Ryan C. Willingham. That would create two whole, complete separate file drawers, two whole different files. And then it's a complete nightmare to associate them and get them sent out properly. Versus if you start out by adding everything you need right into this client database, it'll always be right when it populates it and all of the files will be properly associated. So I always start with this. Um, and you, if you go up to the top here, you'll see add new client, right? And let's say um, it is rocks. I'm going to put my maiden name in here so we get a new record. What's your maiden name? Staples, like the Staples Singers. Woo, mama. Now here's something important, like one of the last contracts that I did with you, Corey, right? Um, somebody had entered in a new an individual client info record for each of the persons on the contract. And we don't want to do that. What we want to do is have every single person who's going to be on the contract put in as a secondary person so, right, so that we can <coughs> populate the entire record. So I'm going to put in here Rock Staples, then um, Dwayne. Yeah, Dwayne Webster. Right. Right. We want to put in the email addresses because the email addresses are how people sign these documents and it's how we send them about, right? So I put in everything I can get in here. I get their phone numbers, I get their, and if I have to update this later, if I go back in and update it through here, it'll update the whole contract, it'll update everything for you, right? Mm -hmm. So if you start in in this client con contact area, it's going to save you a lot of heartache. heartache. So then I save the record. Boom. Question before moving forward. Yes. Here. Say it's an investor and it's an LLC. Oh. Under the, company or business name? Isn't that a beautiful question? Look I'm at that. You are in the middle of doing that right now. So now let's go back into that client, right? I can put in a company business name here, but that's not what we're after. Um, this is one where um, I would enter in their regular name name in the client info, but then that is going to be the exception to the rule. When I create a contract in an LLC, if I do that, I'll show you when we do the quick start how to fix that. I'm not sure quite how to. Let's, let's check help just to make sure. 
how you do it. You put it into the company and then it puts the company right under their name when they're signing for that company. Let's how, check. How my investor thing works. Okay. Then I'm going to say um, rocks. LLC. Test that bad boy. Save. Right. Now if I go up here I can navigate. We've got the letters up here. So I can go to Staples and see if that's saved in here or if it's saved under the LLC. Here we go. Staples. Rocks and Dua with an LLC. Okay, there it is. So that's uh, dealing with the data database. You can go back in here, you can correct it, blah, blah, blah.